We have been fortunate to start with two excellent presentations. And I have to say I was a bit dismayed listening to Dr. Soroy's because he was describing all of these new therapies that are going to make the issue of cabbage and stents irrelevant. And then I realized, however, most of these new therapies have unpronounceable names. So it means most doctors won't prescribe them. They'll stick to aspirin and statins. So we may not be put out of business as quickly as you think. What I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes is talk about where we are with cabbage and PCI today. And I'm going to illustrate the consistent and persistent efforts in the literature to distort both clinical and scientific reality. When we look at cabbage versus PCI, there are always three very important cautions when you're interpreting data. Always ask yourself, who are the patients? The patients are often highly selected, and you can predict the outcome of your trial by selecting particular patients before the first patient is randomized. The second is, if there's not a minimum duration of follow-up of five years, don't accept what you're being told. Remember, 80% of patients with coronary artery disease will be alive at 15 years, so we need to know what's happening way beyond five years. And the third thing to consider is, look at what patients received optimal medical therapy, because in the majority of trials of PCI versus cabbage, cabbage patients receive inferior medical therapy. And the next final tip is if you're reviewing a paper, either for yourself or for a journal, never read the text. Look at the results, look at the data, because by the time you've done that, you should then know what is in the text. But many papers describing PCI and cabbage will have a very pro-PCI bias at odds with what the data actually shows. This is still the most important trial done in uh, coronary artery disease that requires in intervention. Dr. Soroy was the principal author. And this showed in the syntax trial, and it was in a very important trial because it, it was a relative all-comer trial compared to all the previous trials that had been very highly selected. And it showed a very clear benefit at five years for cabbage in terms of reduced death, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, and the need for repeat revascularization. And the second thing it showed was that the benefits of cabbage became magnified when there was more severe disease. So in the low syntax scores of less than 23, there was a 1% difference in mortality at five years. But for the intermediate and high syntax scores, those benefits were respectively 7% and almost 10% at five years, accompanied by significant reductions in myocardial infarction and the need for repeat revascularization. So very similar to what Torsten Dunst has just been telling us. So one of the things, the syntax trial was then criticized heavily by the cardiology community on two bases. It first said there was no use of FFR in syntax, and that also syntax had used an old generation drug eluting stent. So the FAME 3 trial was designed to address both these limitations. It randomized 1,500 patients, either to PCI or cabbage, used FFR guided PCI, and used the best <clears throat> current drug eluting stent. Now, the primary endpoint, and this is crucial to understand at one year, was a composite of death, myocardial infarction, stroke, and repeat revascularization. So there were four components to the primary endpoint. And at one year, you could see there was a significant benefit of cabbage over PCI. So PCI did not meet the criteria for non-inferiority. But what we all wanted to know is what happened at three years. And this was published in circulation in 2023. And if you actually look at the primary endpoint of the trial, it was highly in favor of cabbage over PCI with a very significant reduction in the hazard ratio. But what did the authors do? They changed the endpoint for the major publication. 
They now use death, MI, stroke, and removed repeat revascularization. Now, there were 40 authors in this paper. It was very widely reviewed by statisticians, other reviewers, editors. And you have to ask, was everyone asleep? In my professional career, I have never seen a randomized trial where the primary endpoint was changed halfway through the trial. Has anyone ever seen that before? So this is a dis deliberate attempt to a wider readership to distort the reality of what this trial showed. Dr. Sarois was also on one of the key authors of this paper, along with 14 interventional cardiologists, and I can show you any number of meta-analyses showing that cabbage is superior to PCI. I could show you literally 15 different meta-analyses. And those were non-diabetic patients. For diabetic patients, the most definitive study is the Freedom Trial, 1,900 patients showing a reduction in mortality by 6% out to eight years with cabbage compared to PCI. And these were patients with relatively low severity diabetes. They were not the most severe cohort. And the conclusions were, by the cardiologists, in patients with diabetes and multivessel disease, cabbage leads to lower all-cause mortality than with PCI drug eluting stents in long-term follow-up. We've already heard about it for patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy. <clears throat> the STITCH trial showed a survival advantage for cabbage appearing after five years and accelerating out to 10 years. This is a study by Mark Ruel's group. This was a prospective study looking at almost 5,000 patients with impaired ejection fractions below 35%, matched for 30 baseline characteristics and followed out past nine years. And you can see that as you follow these patients, a marked improvement in survival in favor of cabbage, accompanied by marked reductions in MACE, myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization, and no difference in stroke. And we've already heard about this trial, the, the REVIVE trial, 700 patients undergoing PCI with optimal medical therapy versus optimal medical therapy alone. And this showed that at almost four years, absolutely no difference in the primary outcome, the secondary outcome, death, myocardial infarction, hospitalization or repeat revascularization. So you can say conclusively, there is no benefit of PCI in ischemic left ventricular dysfunction. I'm going to finish in the last few slides, just again showing you how literature can be distorted. This is the Excel trial of which everyone will be well aware. The largest, most definitive trial of PCI versus cabbage, but again with relatively selected patients with syntax scores below 33, which would be one third of routine practice. The randomization was stopped early. Only 1,900 patients were randomized out of the proposed 2,600, and that was never explained why that happened. And it was important, these patients had a mean age of 66, so they would have an anticipated life expectancy of 15 to 20 years. And the primary outcome was a composite of death, MI, stroke, but not repeat revascularization. And the trial used a new, previously undetermined biochemical definition of myocardial infarction and not the universal definition of myocardial infarction data. Now, Oxford was the second largest recruiter to this trial worldwide, because we thought this was a very important trial, both myself and my cardiology colleagues. <clears throat> But what did Excel show at five years? It showed a significant increase in the risk of death in patients undergoing PCI. And when you consider these patients had a mean age of 66 and relatively low syntax scores, this was certainly a worrying phenomenon. So PCI at five years showed a relative, almost 40% increase in the risk of death, non-procedural myocardial infarction, and need for repeat revascularization and no difference in stroke. And it's very interesting, the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine in the initial review of this paper said, the finding of a higher mortality rate in one group than another in a clinical trial 
unless the difference is clearly trivial, should receive central emphasis in the report of the results, and we would generally consider it important to include such information in the concluding statement in the final paragraph. And I thought that was a very good review. But what actually happened when the paper was resubmitted was it concluded in patients with left main coronary artery disease of low or intermediate anatomical complexity, there was no significant difference between PCI and cabbage with respect to the rate of the COMSA outcomes of death, stroke or myocardial infarction at five years. I did not believe that really reflected what the Excel trial showed. And the other thing I want to ask, where are the 10-year results? If you see a rapidly accelerating mortality at five years in a cohort of patients who are relatively young, where are the 10-year results? When finally the biochemical definition of myocardial infarction in Excel was explained by the universal definition of myocardial infarction rather than by the new protocol definition, you can see there was an almost 75% reduction in the incidence of myocardial infarction in the cabbage group. That would have completely changed the primary outcome of the Excel trial, but this data was not presented until well after the trial was published. And the final slide I'm just going to show is, what, how does the literature try and distort what's happening? After the publication of the Excel trial, this was a paper published in the European Heart Journal, one of the most prestigious cardiology journals. And this was exclusively done by 14 authors, none of whom were surgeons. And what this did, actually, this meta-analysis, was it effectively diluted the Excel trial, the largest, most definitive trial of left main, with four older, smaller, weaker studies until the mortality benefit that was observed in the Excel trial had been diluted away. There were no indication that these were highly selected patients with left main with relatively short follow-up. But here's what I call meta-analysis magic. This study had a record speed of acceptance and publication. It was 11 days from being submitted, to being reviewed, to being revised, to being resubmitted, and final acceptance in 11 days. How many of you have had a paper like that? So my advice to the audience is if you want, if you think you've got something important, submit it to the European Heart Journal and say, can it please be published in 11 days? And see what response you get. I, I'm definitely going to finish with this slide too. There are three reasons for the persisting survival benefit of cabbage over PCI, despite all the technological advances there have been. Now, I've been showing this slide for almost 20 years, so there's nothing new in it. But what I have always, as Torsten explained, what is the anatomical benefit of bypass grafts? If you place a bypass graft to the mid-coronary vessel, you do two things. You make the complexity of the proximal culprit lesion irrelevant, and over the longer term, it offers prophylactics against future proximal culprit lesions. In contrast, PCI only treats suitable localized proximal culprit lesions, but has no prophylactic benefit against new disease. The second difference is shown by Tom Lusher three decades ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. If you place an internal mammary artery to the LED, it elutes nitric oxide into the coronary circulation, and that reduces the risk of further development of disease. In contrast, a drug eluting stent impairs re-endothelialization, causes downstream endothelial dysfunction, and creates a pro-thrombotic environment. And the third difference is that for many patients, PCI means incomplete revascularization. And incomplete revascularization has repeatedly been shown to correlate with a subsequent risk of increase in MACE and indeed mortality. And Dr. Soroy was one of the authors of this 
So I would say that for these reasons, PCI is unlikely to ever match the results of cabbage for most patients with left main and multivessel disease. Mm -hmm. It didn't with balloon angioplasty. It didn't with bare metal stents. It didn't with drug eluting stents. And it hasn't done so with the latest concept of new drug eluting mm -hmm. stents. But if you understand these three pathophysiological mechanisms, you can understand why cabbage has and is likely to remain the superior therapy for most patients with left main and multivessel disease. On that point, I'll conclude my talk. I would like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to give this presentation and you, the audience, for your attention. Thank you.